Thank you, Sereno. I think this is sort of a subgroup that you'll hear more about, and I'm honored to be at this 11th annual event, and it just keeps getting better and better each year. Now, in 2004, this 33-year-old gal shows up to see me, and she's miserable enough you think she needs a hip replacement. And I said, you know, gosh, at age 33, why don't we try to see what we can do arthroscopically before sending you off for an arthroplasty? The arthritis doesn't seem all that bad. We looked in her joint, and her articular surfaces were absolutely pristine. But as we looked laterally, we can see there's a problem. Looking anteriorely, the, the labrum's pretty beat up. So, well, you know, we'll start off cleaning this stuff up a little bit and see what we got. And as we cleaned it up, we realized that there was a lot of bone out beyond the labrum. So we're cleaning this up, and kind of you can see that mostly just bone up front. We switched the scope to the anterior portal, looked laterally, and problem just gets worse. The lateral labrum is even in worse shape and say, well, we'll try to clean this stuff up and all I encounter is more bone behind this sort of thin film of labrum. We recontoured all this and when she woke up, her pain was gone as all I could do to slow her down for a while before I, I would tackle her other hip and sort of realize that there's something else going on here besides just conventional uh, FAI. Here's where we kind of recontoured it, looking posteriorly. Even the poster labrum was ossified, but we sort of stopped as we went back. So as we look back at her x-ray, really a couple of things that tipped off to us. As you look at the lateral margin of acetabulum, she's really got this triangular shaped piece of bone. And what we're looking at is a cross-sectional anatomy of the ossified labrum. And if you sort of put your thumb over that area, the rest of her hip was really in pretty good shape. Now some cases are a little more evident. Here's another case. And uh, you open it up and they can respond exceptionally well. I mean, this, this case is not, not too hard to sort out. Here's a little more subtle case as we're looking at this gal getting into trouble with her left hip. The CT scan helps us because you see the thickening of the rim and that thickening of the rim is the ossified labrum in contrast to the articular cartilage that abuts it. And on the axial CT images, that double cortical line is not pathognomonic of an ossified labrum, but when you see that double cortical line, you better start keeping an ossified labrum in your differential diagnosis. Now, this, in this case, we just mobilize the labrum, recontour the rim, and put the labrum back. This is a case that is more subtle. Really, the only thing you can see is some slight flex of densities lateral to the rim of the acetabulum, some calcium deposits. And as we look in her hip, you can see she's got this very diminutive labrum because a lot of it's transformed to bone. Small labrum, not a lot to work with. But what she's got looks pretty good, so we just sharply mobilize the labrum, free it up. You'll see the little calcium deposits coming out. And not all labral ossification occurs with a precursor of calcific, calcific deposition, but sometimes it does. We mobilize the labrum. And I'll be honest with you, as you're getting started, these are fun cases because technically they're very challenging, but you're sort of working with a safety net because labral debridement in these cases is not a bad backup position. But in this case, she's got a nice little labrum. Because it's so small, it obligates us to use simple loop sutures to restore the labrum. We want to stabilize this so we can try to move her as quickly as possible. And we just go through the sequence of steps, placing a number of sutures as we come around the rim, because the lesion oftentimes extends far around laterally. And with these small labrums, you sort of have to use every trick in the book, because the labrum oftentimes is very fragile. So you've got to be gentle as you're passing your sutures and tying them. But here's just kind of the finished product. We're able to correct her pincer lesion and restore and preserve this even small labrum. Now, there's really only two articles in the literature about labral ossification. The first one came out of Japan. It was basically a single case report where they noted histology showing inchondral in ossification of the labrum. The only other study was by Michael Lunig, and Michael Lunig said it's not label ossification at all. These people already have pincer impingement, and as they're colliding against the rim, they get overgrowth of more appositional bone that just displaces the labrum. And that's probably this type of case that we've encountered. You can see the lip off the anterior acetabulum. Here's a labrum that's beat up. This is a hip that's halfway in trouble, significant articular damage on both sides of the joint. Here's that lip of bone. This is not inside the labrum. This is pushing down on the labrum that she has. So we recontoured this. And again, this is a very unhealthy labrum. And we've gotten to where we'll pretty much always restore the labrum, regardless of the quality of the tissue. And again, it obligates us to use loop sutures. But even with that, you can get pretty good labral tissue. It probably looks about as good as if you put a graft in there, but it's already uh, cartilage-like. 
So really, we, we have this article that, uh, that we submitted to our Throsby Journal on Adult Acquired Pension Impingement from Label Ossification, what we coined oftentimes the captured hip. Uh, they actually accepted the article, but they made us change the name to Surgical Outcome of Pincer FAI uh, with and without label ossification. And in this group, we basically had a control group of those with ossified labrum compared to those who did not have an ossified labrum. And basically, we found the ossified labrum group were much older, 45 years average age versus 33 years, about two to one female dominated versus conventional FAI, which is about two to one male dominated. These patients are severely disabled. They have much worse pain sitting, much more severely restricted activities of daily living, and oftentimes more globally reduced range of motion. Both groups have impingement testing, but what we found in the ossified labrum group is uh, problems with favor testing were much more prevalent. As far as imaging, x-rays reveal this about two-thirds of the time. CT scans reveal about three-fourths of the time. But the most important message is MRIs are notoriously poor at differentiating label ossification. It'll interpret it as just being a normal labrum. Really, the big difference between these two groups is we did a lot more debridements in the ossified labrum group because we're just excising the ossified labrum versus the control group. The vast majority were refixations. Just as some of the sample histology, the few that we've done does indeed show inchondral ossification of the labrum, so it's not just the labrum being displaced. As far as outcome, the ossified labrum group actually did better than the, than the control group as far as the amount of improvement. But because they started off with such poor disabling preoperative modified Harris hip scores, their eventual outcomes were still poorer than the control group. We had only one patient underwent repeat arthroscopy and none were converted to, to hip replacement in either group. So just to summarize for you, Label ossification does seem to represent a unique subgroup of FAI, what we've coined adult-acquired pincer impingement. Typically, it's a 45-year-old female versus conventional FAI, which is a 33-year-old male. Some of these are severely disabled and respond remarkably well to arthroscopic correction, what we've termed the captured hip. You can really give them their life back. In general, these patients tend to be more disabled than conventional FAI patients. They may show greater improvement, but still less complete recovery due to the low baseline scores. The results of arthroscopic debridement are favorable, but suboptimal in this group. And I think that's important information as you're counseling your, their, your patients on what to expect from the operation. Very important to keep in mind that MRIs vastly underrepresent label ossification. Many of these can be treated with simple excision of the ossified labrum. My reasoning not jumping on board with that yet are, first of all, many of these, although not all of them, are a home run uh, with what we're able to accomplish. Keep in mind that the success of the procedure is dependent on the rehab process, which really emphasizes aggressive early range of motion mobilization, and that can be compromised if you're worrying about protecting a, a labral graft. And also, if their native labrum ossifies, what do you think is going to be the natural progression of a graft if you put it in there? I worry that it may simply go on to ossify as well. I do think this would be a very reasonable fallback position for failures, although thus far in this group we published, we only reoperated on one, and she did well removing adhesions. The etiology of label ossification is not well understood. It probably represents uh, multiple subpopulations. It's a significant problem that we're just beginning to scratch the surface on, and it needs better understanding in order to implement improved treatment. Uh, we are seeing an association with SI joint disease, and I suspect for some of these, not all, there may be some sort of autoimmune component. But as always, greetings from Nashville, and it's great to be here in Vail. And Mark, thanks for having me. Thank you.